Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Chow with Lao. And today I've got a little slice of Korean heaven for you. I'm going to be showing you how to make kimchi chicken stir fry. Let's do this. For those of you who are unfamiliar with kimchi, where have you been for the last 10 years? Kimchi has come across from the Pacific to Europe and is taking the world by storm. It's an amazing food. It's actually the Koreans' national food. They're quite rightly obsessed with it. And there's a good reason for that because it's spicy, it's garlicky, it's tangy, it's fermented, it's such a powerful flavour but so full of umami. It's one of those foods in the West that can actually divide opinion because some people love it, some people can't get near it. It's quite a pungent food, it's usually some form of fermented cabbage, lots of garlic, lots of chilli. It's one of those foods that when you open a jar or a patch, because in this country we don't tend to make it fresh, you can do and there are probably loads of recipes on YouTube you can find to make your own, but normally we get it in the jars, the tubs or pouches and they are pretty good. My wife's obsessed with them. She's tried loads and she's really happy about that. But when you open them up, they really hit you between the taste buds and your slivery glands get going. You know what I mean? It's that kind of food. And then you can eat it as it is, or you can do what I'm doing today. We're going to add it to a stir fry dish and give that real oomph in the flavor department. This is going to be spectacular, guys. Right, so the first thing is we're going to investigate what lies within this jar. Ooh, look at that. That new jar feel. <laughs> it's, ooh. Oh my word, look at that. That's a fancy top. It's supposed to be some sort of vented jar, so it lets it breathe. Wow. I'm getting chilly. I'm getting garlic, there's a tanginess and it's making my, what they call colloquially here, it's making my tabs laugh and if you're a Midlander you might understand that in the UK. You might not know that in the States though. If you understand what I'm saying actually, wherever you are in the world, if you've got the equivalent, let me know in the description below. By the way, this particular kimchi is a radish kimchi, right, you can eat it straight out the jar. Let's see. Wow. It's very crunchy. The radish is very crunchy. It's definitely a tang. There's some heat. Oh my gosh. That's quite spicy. The reason why I picked this particular kimchi instead of the cabbage one is because the radish is going to have that crunch, which is going to go well with the rest of the dish. The meat we're going to use is chicken. Obviously, you don't actually have to use meat. You can do this vegetarian. You can fill it with mushrooms and just other veggies, and it'll be fantastic. Mmm. <laughs> that is pungent. Wow. Yeah, I can tell why some people love it, some people hate it. I know all the Koreans love it. But I, I like it. Not as much as my wife does, but I think once you put it in a dish like this, I think it's going to be amazing because we can alter the rest of the flavors to suit it. Okay, so without further ado, let's get on with the prep. So the first thing I'm going to do is slice up our chicken breasts. I've got two chicken breasts here, which I'm just gonna slice quite thinly, bite size. Just wanna give a quick shout out to two people here. Petra, my landlady at work, who has grown these in her own garden, these courgettes. I've been cooking with them all week. They are absolutely amazing. You can't beat homegrown and they're so fantastic. Thank you, Petra. And also some of you might notice that I've actually started my own Patreon page. And my first patron is Matthias. Thank you so much for joining my mini walk crew. Thank you, Matthias. Your support is really appreciated. So if you'd like to help support my channel by becoming a patron of my Patreon channel and become one of my mini walk crew members, then I'll leave the link in the description below. Every penny that you pledge is gonna help me buy more ingredients, better equipment, and most importantly, free me up to make more and better videos. 
Obviously, there's no obligation to do that. I would never say that to you. You being here and watching my videos is still mind blowing to me and all that I'd ever need to continue doing the channel. But at the same time, if you were to become a patron, I would be eternally grateful. And you'd all get a shout out in the video for every new patron that joins. And I'm gonna put a list of all my patrons at the end of every video. So Matthias, watch out for your name check right at the end. So I'm gonna marinate the chicken with half a tablespoon of light soy sauce half a tablespoon of sesame oil and half a teaspoon of sugar. Give it a good mix and then set aside for an hour in the fridge. You can leave it overnight as well if you want. Right guys, flame on. Basic wok technique. Get your wok smoking hot before you put the oil two or three tablespoons of oil going in here, just cooking oil. Remember, do not go for sesame oil or olive oil or any fragrant oil because that will burn. They've got low smoking points. You want vegetable oil, rapeseed oil, corn oil, anything like that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do after swirling the oil around is we're gonna add our veggies. Ouch, that's splattered. That's how hot it should be. It should sizzle, okay. What we want is for all our vegetables and meat to come together at the end right at the same time. The veggies being chunky and the chicken being quite thinly cut, the chicken's going to cook quicker than the veggies in this case. So we're going to put the veggies in. Look at all these lovely delicious veggies going in here. It's going to be amazing. Okay. The other thing we need to do is season as we go. So we're going to have a little bit of salt. A little bit of cracked black pepper. Not all of it all at once. This is just a little bit at a time. So we're seasoning the veggies. We'll season again when we add the meat in. Bearing in mind that kimchi is quite salty. So go tread lightly. Tread lightly. That's the advice. Okay. Look at that, it's getting a bit dry in there, so we're gonna add a little bit more oil. Okay. Probably another tablespoon or so. Get that going, smoking, keep that temperature up. Give it a flick if you want, but try not to keep it off the heat too much, otherwise you're gonna lose that wok hay. There we go. I think I'm ready for my chicken. I'm gonna make a space in the middle. Put a little bit more oil in there, get that hot. Grab my chicken, in it goes, no messing. Push it in, try to get the chicken in contact with your really hot wok. Once you've kind of done that, let it be for a little bit. Let it sear, let it caramelize. Put the flame on hot, it never goes below full whack when we're doing this kind of dish. Try not to move it until it sears, otherwise you're gonna rip up the meat. Now, we can move it a little bit. Okay. Now we can mix, mix, mix. Toss it in, toss it in. Excellent. Now, a touch more salt. And more pepper. Get that going. At this point, Gonna add a little bit more light soy sauce. About half a tablespoon again, just a nice little splash. Not for saltiness, more for the soy flavor. I think adding the salt and the soy sauce to it will give you a good combination. Just like I said, go lightly on the salt. Obviously soy sauce adds a saltiness to it, but to be honest, in most Chinese cooking recipes, yes, saltiness does happen but so does the soy flavor and that's what gives Chinese cooking 
that unique flavour. Now for the kimchi. I'm going to put one, two, three tablespoons of the stuff in. Maybe four, let's put four, let's go bold. Four, four tablespoons. See what happens. Oh yes, look at that. Some flavour there. To this I'm going to add some liquid. I've got some just plain pre-boiled water here. Probably about 200 to 300 millilitres of water. And this will finish off the cooking of the chicken especially. Bring that to the boil. Got a teaspoon and a half of sugar that's going in. I need to add some sweetness to this. The kimchi again is kind of like chili hot, like that, that kind of dry chili that's, I say dry, it's more the feel than the actual lack of liquid if you know what I mean. It's got that kind of dry chili taste and I need sugar to balance that out, I feel. Let's see how that's like. Okay, get that up to temperature. I'm gonna go in with a spoon and taste the sauce. See what it's like. Mmm, yeah. Yeah, it's good. Definitely got that kimchi kind of feel to it. How much you like kimchi is how much you put in. I'm going to go quite moderate. I think you could put more if you're a real, real kind of kimchi fan. I'm going to add more light soy sauce. I feel it needs a little bit more of that in it. Okay. And I'm also going to add a bit more of the kimchi juice from the container because I want that, I want a little bit more flavour and I want a little bit more colour, which I think we'll get from that. There you go. And then I think we're cooked. So, last thing we're going to do, I've got corn flour slurry here, or corn, or corn starch slurry as you call it in the States, it's about a tablespoon mixed with a little cold water and this will thicken it up put it in there bring it back to the boil and it will thicken up just like that that's nice you see that it's almost instant i love using corn flour <laughs> and there you go guys i think we're done and finish off with our spring onions and a sprinkling of sesame seeds. Right guys, moment of truth. I'm gonna serve it with my normal, my regular, if you like. Steamed rice, naturally. Okay. Oh, let's see what it's like. I'm gonna try a bit of chicken. Hmm. That is actually really nice. I was a little bit worried before I tried this recipe. Choo choo choo. Because kimchi, in its raw state, if you like, is really, really potent. Now, I put four tablespoons of this stuff in with some juice added. And I, I was thinking, is that too much? But when it actually melds with the rest of the ingredients, we've got that water to create the sauce. It's actually toned it down to a, a, a level which I think is absolutely spot on. I mean, obviously you, could, you can adjust this to, according to how much you like that kimchi flavor. I mean, if it was my wife, if she tipped the whole lot in, I'm sure she would. But yeah, this is good. Hmm. When she comes home tonight, I'm gonna try it on her and see if she likes it. I think she will. She, she has no idea I'm making this, by the way. So it'll be a surprise, but because she loves all things Korean, especially kimchi. I think she's going to like it, right? This is the actual radish. 
Hmm. That is really different. It's got the spiciness, the tanginess, and that freshness of the radish. Even though it's been preserved, that's really good. Very different. I like it. You know, when you think of a recipe, maybe, or maybe you don't. <laughs> but when I think of a recipe for chow with lao, it's always food that I like to eat. I guess this one's dedicated to my wife, Yvonne, bless her. She gets a shout out. Because she loves it. She's been wanting me to do Korean recipes since the year dot. Now I haven't really had a chance to, not properly. So when you're doing it for somebody else, you never know if you're gonna like it yourself. And you know what I'm like. I'm only gonna put recipes on my channel that I really like, where I really love. This deserves to go on the channel. It is really good. Obviously being a stir fry dish, very easy to do. Just follow the normal rules of stir frying. High heat, get that sucker hot. And you'll get that lovely stir fried effect. It's not rocket science guys, people out there, I get comments and messages saying, oh, it's like magic. It's not magic. It's really, really simple. Check out my stir frying videos. I'll leave some links in the description. Don't be afraid of stir frying. It is actually really easy. People overcomplicating it, like treating it like some sort of mystical art. It's not. It's just a technique of cooking. You've got to adjust to if you're not used to it. But once you've got it down, it's easy. And then I'm getting people saying, oh, you can't use non-stick woks. You can't do this. Of course you can. And if that's what you got, use it. I'm here to encourage you to use whatever you've got. Doesn't matter, you will get decent results as long as you follow some rules, okay? So just because you don't have a carbon steel wok that you spent hours seasoning and looking after like it's a pet, doesn't mean you can't do it. Honestly, you've got a non-stick wok or any other kind of pan, you can do it. Okay, yeah, obviously if you've got the best tools, you can possibly potentially do better, but you've got to have the skills to back that up. Just because you've got a carbon steel wok doesn't mean that you're Ken Hom or anybody else like that. You've got to be able to use it, okay? Think about that. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this recipe. If you do try it, let me know in the comments below how you get on, which kind of kimchi you're gonna use, all that sort of thing. Like I said, you can have veggie, veggie dishes as well. It all works really nicely. And I get to say this now, thank you to my patron, Matthias. You are a superstar and I really appreciate you. If anybody else wants to join my merry band, links are in the description below. Please like this video if you've liked it, subscribe if you haven't, all the good YouTube stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care guys, bye.